Okay, you're live. You're live on the Actually Luxury Paul Pluter channel. This is the Paul Pluter channel, and we're interest we're interviewing super super collectors. <laughs> and today we've got the most super of super collectors. We've got Rudy, the rich English collector. How are you, super collector? I'm fine. How are you up? Paul, are you okay? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. It's um, I tell you what, we've uh we've we've uh we've been talking about your collection today. Me and Clivers did a review. It turns out I like your collection more than he did. And um it's quite interesting. The um it's quite interesting some of the um the uh thoughts that we had there on your collection and uh i uh you you did say to me i made a few mistakes so i was going to just go through this this with you and we can and also it. actually it's quite funny um how some certain people make certain comments and they try to think they know about watches but they don't know about watches at all um because some of the comments they made were actually unfactual with regards to the actual pieces yes yes that's exactly right <laughs> the uh, like for like for instance paul just as a, as a quick example before we start sure, there's one guy sure. called greg meg and he said the 1921 vacheron was designed to be worn on the right hat right of the wrist that's not correct because the numbers would be in the re incorrect position for one for one and second, the watch was actually designed for a preacher. I see. Wow. So, he, so when he laid his hands flat on the pulpit, yeah, you know, reading the sermon, he could read the time. Oh, I see. Got you. That's the idea behind it, hey? Correct. Jeez, and it wouldn't know... work on the left hand. You'd have to, you'd have to resolder the lugs for it to be on the right hand, for it to work. Yes. Yes. So tell me this. Also, your I got I made a mistake too. Your uh, five fifteen two hundred two was actually a platinum one. Well, there's two. There was the original one in the picture, and the yeah. one on my wrist. Have you noticed the dial is different? It's smoked blue. Yes. And it's yes. got a platinum bezel with uh, a titanium case. <clears throat> with uh, titanium, uh, sorry, platinum center links, and it's limited to two hundred and fifty pieces. Oh, so it's actually titanium and platinum. Correct. So it's not solid type platinum. It's not solid. Only platinum. the bezel and the center links. Oh, okay, okay, so got you. And they've done that on purpose to keep the watch light on the wrist, like the uh, the, the original ultra thin. Oh, I see. Otherwise, the watch would be just too heavy. I see. I see. I see. I see. Amazing stuff. Um, now, you've also, the other interesting thing is, is that you've also, um, you've also got a few pieces coming. So what I thought we'd do is let's just start from the top. And we'll just go through this collection and make sure we haven't asked it up. So the first watch I started when we were reviewing it, me and Clive together. <clears throat> Let's just go through each piece like we did with you. So yeah. this first piece here, tell me about this this Royal Oak here. Tell me about this skeletonized Torbion. Tell me about this one. That watch is limited to 50 pieces only. Okay. What was your? This is made of steel. Tell me about it, please. Tell me what, it's what made, is it? It's made of steel. It's a steel watch. Yeah. Steel no watch. Bands, it's a steel watch, but um, a tourbillon. This is this is big, 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 big money. Yeah, you see, you see, thing with that particular watch. Yeah. Again, that's an investment, and people say you don't make money on those, but if you pick the right ones that are limited, they do. Like, for instance, the other version of that watch, which is. The forty-one mil steel watch. It retails in English money for I think around about thirty-seven k. 
you on the on the grey market, people are willing to pay forty five k for it because it's so hard to get. Because what you got to remember is those watches they they only manufacture one or two a year. I see. Because those watches are actually um, <clears throat> put together by one watchmaker. It doesn't go to several different watchmakers. It's from start to finish with one watchmaker. Uh, and that's see. and that's why and that's why the the watches are what they are. It's everything for a reason, you know. I see. You see, uh, you know, there was one comment. I think it was the um, uh, again that Greg guy said the usual same old choices without much originality. Well. I think the APs that I've got are not the usual same old watches because those particular watches don't really come up on your channel at all. They're mainly Rolex. Yes. Yes. I understand. I don't mind people making criticism because at the end of the day, everybody's choice is different. What I like is not necessarily what you like, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. But to make a criticism for the sake of making it, making a criticism is stupid, you know, without actually qualifying what they're saying to back it up because none of those comments back up anything, really. No, they're just nasty fuckers, really. I mean, there's um, this other guy, right, called Stretch Lord that's... Mm -hmm. I noticed in his live comments kept saying that they weren't my photographs. Well, you could clearly see they were my photographs. It was my wrist. And a lot of them were taken in the same place for that very reason to prove they were my photographs. Yes, I see. Mm, very interesting. Uh, next piece, let's move along here. Let's move along. Let's move along. Um, this is a multi photo of yours here. You own all of these pieces here? Well, yeah, obviously you can see that they're all in my that my other watches, the usual suspects, are there amongst the other pieces. So, No, no, no. I was just saying you haven't um, sold any of these. These are all no. current? Yeah, because they're all long-term. They're all long-term. You see, the thing is I noticed um, uh, Max Levis <laughs> said that he yeah. thought I didn't own any Rolexes. I said I don't wear any Rolexes. There's a difference. Owning and wearing are two different scenarios of yes 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 let's click on to the next picture you've got the speaking of rolex the sea dweller 43 this is quite a nice watch do you do you like this one as a rolex um i bought it as an investment um it's not particularly for me i think 43 mil is too big for that watch and, I, and okay. to be honest i don't like the cyclops okay Okay. But, you know, it's like the thing I, I always say to people, uh, Paul, is a car salesman sells cars, yeah. but he doesn't necessarily like the cars he sells. No. No, I know what you're saying. Uh, okay, fair enough. Next piece, the Vacheron. This is the Vacheron we were talking about. So this is the left hand watch you're saying. Is that correct? Yeah, it is. Because if you imagine, if you put that on the right hand, of your wrist oh yes yeah i see so i i thought this one might have been like a uh a, a racing watch but you said no, no it was, it was actually preacher. designed for a preacher it's what a sort of preacher story. what sort of preacher a fucking Just good one. normal church so you know when he's at the at the top giving his sermon with the bible what sort of preacher is is buying vacherons can i ask you that well well you only have to go on to um <laughs> youtube and see these uh Preachers like Benny Hinn and Rodney Howard Brown, they're multi, multi billionaires by ripping yes. people off with their fake preaching by pretending to heal people and uh, stuff yes. like that. They're making, they got private jets and everything, Paul. They're like rock stars. Sure. sure. I see what you're saying. Um, okay. Fair, fair call. Fair call. Um, okay. I, I quite like this piece in platinum. What was the? I don't. It's better, I think it's. I think it looks nice in flash when you take this photo. It looks terrible with the flash. But but actually, there was no flash. 
That was just the lights in the room. Okay. 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 We'll forgive you this once. Uh, I quite like that. That's one of my all-time favorites. All-time favorites. I love that watch. Uh, next one. The blank paint. Now, this is a fucking... Clive was complaining about the dial, but I think it just looks sexy. I think so, too, you know. Um, what, what's the bezel think... made of? What's the bezel made of? Um, the bezel is made of... Um, uh... It's not ceramic. It's the other one. No. It's um, oh, oh, aluminum. No, 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 no. It's um, it's a, it's a glass, but it's not ceramic. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. I got gotcha. you because it looks very, very, very. I like the look of it. Look, almost looks kind of liquidy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but what's cool about that, which I don't understand why Rolex don't do it, which you would think mm -hmm. was logical, is the bezel is actually illumined as, uh, as well as the dial. Ah, got you. Yes, yes. Which makes sense, really, doesn't it? No, no, that's a great idea. I understand. I, I, I love the fonts on this. I love the hands. Everything about this watch. Tell me this: What do you think of these people who mod Seikos to look like a blank pane fifty fathoms? Well, it's exactly like uh, <laughs> these these people <laughs> that that buy a car. And then they buy a kit for it to make it look like a Ferrari, but it's a Ford underneath. <laughs> yes. What do you think of that? Well, what, what, what? I don't see the point. I just don't see the point. Well, they, they want to protect. They want the blank pane look at a Seiko price. Well, then buy a fake from, uh, you know, uh, some fake place in Dubai or something like that. You know, Karama or something like that. Just get a fake watch then. Okay. If, if your objective is to make it look like a fake. I tell you uh, what, that, that is one of the nicest looking shots of the blank pane I've seen. That just looks fucking stunning. Yeah, I bought it with the steel strap and then I um, yes. bought the skull cloth strap as well. Uh, okay. Because it was okay. the cheaper way around of doing it. Uh, sea Dweller, this is the pre ceramic Sea Dweller. This is a lovely piece. 2008, no holes case. One of the last ones with a no holes case. I actually prefer that to the the later sea dweller, which was with the ceramic bezel. And I prefer it to the um, new sea dweller. Sure. sure. I actually prefer it to a sub. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. This AP here. Fuck. This is sexy. I'm not a That's normally. The Biblos one. This is the what? Biblos. Okay. And it's, it's got, got a... Biblos written on the back, and they only made fifty of that one. Who is Big Bloss? Big Bloss is an um, uh, uh, American company, okay. and they did it specially for them. What do they make? They don't. They don't make anything. They're, they're, I think they're in the um, hotel trade. I think. Now, what was the reason for getting this one? Tell me why you bought this one. A, I like the summer edition, right? And yeah. B. The Biblos version was the limited version, which is the one that will hold its value. Okay. I must admit, I'm not a really a big fan of offshore chronographs, but that is a cool looking piece. It is. It's the 44 one. And that's rose gold, isn't it? Yeah, correct. And I like that bluey gray strap. It's fucking sexy. Yeah, it came with a white one, but I changed it to a blue. Oh, is that right? I would never have. I would have thought that was original. Okay. Right. Yes. This this one here. I don't know why you even have this in the collection. The yacht master. What? Well, was I had the... that before. I had any of the others. Anyway. Yeah. And I don't sell anything, so I'd rather keep it than get rid of it. It's just not worth getting rid of it. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Fair call. Um. Okay. Okay, fair, fair call. It looks like a posh sub anyway, really. Yeah, well, it actually, yeah, I agree with you. It is, but I, I, I'm not so sure I, I, I like it. I think a sub would have been better, but, you, but you've, you've got a sub. You have got a sub. You've got a sea dweller. You've got a sea dweller. No, no, okay, fair enough. Okay, you like it. Um, That's okay. That's okay. That's one thing I, I don't know why you need it, but anyhow. Well, like I said, I had that way before when you did my first review. 
over yeah. two and a half years ago i had that watch now this is the the batman i love this yeah. watch i think that's going to be worth a lot more money because they're so cool because they've upgraded the movement on the new pepsi they're yeah. just keeping us going until they get rid of the old movements and then they're going to discontinue it i believe because oh, yeah because on the new deep sea yeah. on all the deep sea range they've upgraded the movements but they haven't upgraded the movements on this watch and the normal black one and i think that's because they've still got many movements to get rid of before they discontinue oh, it oh i see because there would be no reason why they couldn't put the new movement in that watch yeah okay fair enough fair enough um yeah it, it, it is beautiful i must i must grant you that uh, the, that's another great shot. I love the look of that. Where about that's, got the, that's got the sail strap on it this time, if you look. Ah, uh, got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. Fair enough there. That's a that's a cool looking fucker, that. I love that. Um now I wanted to ask you this next one. These two here. You own these two? Yep. Okay, we've already spoken about the sea dweller. Sorry, the sea, the deep sea. Sorry, the sea dweller, the sea dweller, the sky dweller. This is the white gold one. Correct. It's not the steel one. Now, the reason why I bought the white gold one was is I did a, a yeah. deal with the dealer that if I bought the white gold one, when the blue gold one comes in, I'll yeah. have that one as well. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to lose money on that white gold one, on the no. white styled one. So I'll just keep that until the blue one comes in. Oh, okay, got you. Do you wear it? No. You don't I'm wear not into it? I'm not into fluted bezels. It's like, to me, oh. I imagine the guy in his little pipe and slippers in his retirement home with a fluted bezel, you know, or the guy that was retired from, like, a, a, a corporate company like Marks and Spencers or something like that, you know. It's not my... um. It is a cool kind of watch, thing, really. It is very cool. Yeah, you but for the money, that? it is a cool watch for some people, but not for me. It's not my kind of. There's better GMTs out there, you know. If you're going to go for a GMT, really. Oh, but but it's an annual calendar. Yeah, I know. That's pretty amazing. It's Rolex first annual calendar. Yeah. What's wrong with that? That's a cool thing to have. It is, but. I, I just don't, it's just not my kind of thing, really. I'm not a fluted bezel person, as I said. You know, I just got it purely for an investment purpose. I would never wear it. You reckon? It's a cool yeah. watch. Yeah, for some people, but not for me. It may be right for other people, which is fair enough. I'm not saying it's a bad watch. Sure. It's just not the watch for me. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Next one is this here. This is the Royal Oak, non-offshore. This is the standard Royal Oak Rose Gold. Beautiful piece, this. What do you think of it? It's one of my favourite APs, actually, and uh, they did it with the um, gold bracelet as well. But the reason why I didn't go for it with the gold bracelet was it was too heavy with the gold bracelet for me, really. And I like the, the advantage of, of a leather strap of that you can adjust it easily if your hand swells in the heat. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I understand. Mm. It's a brown dial, actually, not black, believe it or not. It's just a shot. Oh, okay, got you. Lovely piece. Uh, you got the James Cameron yep. investment again. Now, this one here, this is the... This is the, uh, the normal how, one. Okay, how do I tell the, the difference? How do I tell the difference? Well, I suppose the colour of the... Um, the dial. You, you see the dial on the other one, you'll see, and you'll see the bezel slightly different colour as well. I see. When you see the next one in a minute, you'll see the dial color is different. Okay, this is the steel one in this photo, isn't it? Or which one's this? Right, that's the steel one, yeah. That's the old one. Is you got both or just one? I got both. That's your quartz tank francais. Yeah, I call that the Gordon Gecko watch of like Wall Street, really. He mind you he had a Santos in that. Yeah, he did have a Santos. That's right, Santos Gale B. Hmm. But, okay, fair enough. That's that there. They were cool. The Francais was cool early 2000s, weren't they? 
Yeah, it, it, it looks dated now, to be honest. Yeah. And it has got an ETA movement in it. Yeah, but this piece here, what what, what brand of jacket is this? It's a very cool jacket you're wearing, that yellow jacket. What is that? And it's not an expensive jacket. It's about 100, 100, 100 US, uh, Australian dollars. Okay, that's expensive. And completely uh, waterproof, really. Have you noticed the river there is all completely iced? You could walk on that. Oh, wow. And what made you get this one here? I, I do like this one. What is this one? Tell me what it is. That's the um, the latest version of the, the Royal Oak Offshore Navy. Yes. I've also got the steel bracelet for it as well. I and see. I've got a leather bracelet. And if you notice with this one, I've put a leather hornback bracelet on it. Yes. And the stitch matches the subdials um hands yes yes i did see that why don't you take it out of the sleeve because if i take it out of the sleeve then the value goes with the watch how much does it go down a lot like what 20 30k just for the plastic yeah because the thing is this right you know the, the whole point of those kinds of watches is to, is to keep those and put them away and then, because this is my retirement fund, so if I can then have that watch as it is new, unopened, mm -hmm. and sell it, it's going to go for a ton of money in the future. Sure. How old are you now? 49. So in 20 years' time, do you really even want the money? Listen... You never know the way things go. You never know. You could have a, an accident. You might need it for medical bills. You never know. You never know what you might need it for. You don't want to wear it? You had no urge to open it up and wear it? No, it's, that's, that's not why I bought the watch. That particular watch I didn't buy. Like I said, for the, for the for that, I, it's just not, not why I bought that watch. To me, that's not the kind of watch you would wear anyway, really. It's no. like having art. It's like some people that own expensive art. They put sometimes they, they put it in archives and never get it out because it will the, the ultraviolet light will damage the artwork. Okay, it's your your, your Batman again. Yeah. These are some of your the ones we've seen there. They're nice. You currently own those, is that correct? Yeah, correct. I, I think this is a bit too conservative in a pattern. I don't think so. I think it's a very understated watch. To be honest, I like the the Roman numerals, and I like the simplicity of the dial. The fact that the, you know, for me, less is more. I just think it just. Yeah, but I mean, a five one nine six is 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 not as formal as this. No, but what I also like about that, which I don't understand why they don't do it on the five one nine six, considering it's the same movement, is that's got a display back. True. True. That's in true. the 5196, the only one I like in the 5196 is the platinum version. Yeah. Because I like the Breguet numbers. Yes, yes. Okay, fair enough. Okay, that's a that's your watch there. This one here, your uh, triple date. Tell me about this. Well, I, I just saw the watch and I just really, really liked it. I think you get a lot of watch for your money. If you imagine what you would pay for that in a Patek, you, you, you get a lawful lot of money for a, for a fantastic watch, really. Yes. I mean, the finish on it is amazing, you know. No, no, I, 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 I do have a Reverso myself. I love them. I love them. I think it's a beautiful timepiece. It's a beautiful timepiece. Okay, next one. Your 5711. Yeah, they've gone crazy in money now, Paul. Absolutely Would you sell it? Crazy. Would you sell yours? Never. Because what do I replace it with? Sure, I understand. I mean, th that watch I paid when I bought it, 15K UK yeah. money. And on and now they're already selling for 45. Now, I have to say, this this Breguet you've got your, of yours, I don't know why you didn't get a La Traditionale. I don't know. Because that is a limited edition piece. If you look in the dial at 4 o'clock, it's a serial mm -hmm. number of how many were made. 
Yeah, but it's kind of ugly. Yeah, but you don't, like I said, you don't buy things sometimes because you like it. Do you like it or not? It's okay watch, you know, but I just got it at the time for to put away in the safe, you know. What's it made of? Platinum. Okay, and it's a jumping hour date as well. Yeah. Uh, do you think you're going to make money out of that piece there? Yeah, if I keep it in its perfect condition, which it will be, yeah, no problem. Okay. I've already been offered more than one and paid for it already. Okay. And this here is another reverse. So this is not the uh, triple date. This is the tribute, the tribute moon phase. Yes, yeah, duo face as well. Don't forget, it's got two sides to the face. Yes, yes. Where's, uh, the, where's, the, where's the tribute? Where's the, the, the other one? It's got display back. Yeah. Tell me, what made you buy this one? I love this watch. I think it's beautiful. I just think it looks really classy. Less is more, isn't it? And the thing I do like about that as well is the fact that there is no um, day and month on it. It's sort of a cleaner dial in a way. I see. Yes, I know what you're saying. It is a very clean dial there. It's a great looking piece. And also it's got buttons instead of numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite nicely done. I, I like the look of those. I quite like the look of that. And um, mm, very interesting. Um, and this here is your platinum Correct. If you look at the dial, see it's different. If you look at the edge of the, the, the face, it's yeah. black and it goes into a dark blue. It's a different yes. blue. Um, I don't think that's the greatest photo, but yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. That is already going for double, it's going for 20 grand more than the retail already. Let's see, I don't think you should buy any more APs, Rudy. Listen, I, I, I've got I've got a couple on order, and you'll understand why I've got them on order. Yeah. Um, but one of them is not even finished in R and D yet, but I'm down for it. Okay. But 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 the thing is, this I'm after a Lange, and I'm also after um, an FP Jean. Um, you know, the uh, chromatic with blue dial. Sure, I understand. Um, let's have a look here. This one again, great photo. It's your 5196, 5196. Now, I don't know why the fuck you even put this Omega in here. I, don't, I I'll just don't what, get I'll it. I'll tell you why. Why is because that? Because the watch you can wear every day if I'm painting the front door, I'm washing the car, you know, whatever. And I don't care if it gets, it gets knackered. Okay. I don't understand why you don't have a Speedmaster if you've got one of these. Because the Speedmaster is not waterproof. Okay, fair point. You you don't want to get a Speedmaster, you said. You've really criticised that watch. What about a first? No, I would get the I would get the three two one movement one, but I can't find one. You don't have any vintage, do you? No. But the thing of what I'm waiting for, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. Is that on the 50th anniversary of of the moon landing next year? They will bring one out with a three two one movement. I'm hoping, mm -hmm. so I'm going to wait. Sure, I see what you're saying. Do you think they'll do that? Well, they'd be stupid not to, really. I mean, they'd be missing a, a trick. They're, they're trying to. They've standardised on that one eight six one movement. They don't want to use a three two one. Yeah, but with the 50th anniversary, it might be different. Because they might do it as a limited edition piece. You never know. Yeah, but I think they'll do some sort of limited edition, but not necessarily a 3 2 one movement. No, but if they don't do a 3 2 one movement, then I'll have to wait and look for a vintage one. Because the, the thing is this, right? And I was thinking about this the other day. People say that this, the new speed mass is not the same as the 3 2 one Well... What watch is the new Submariner is not like the original Submariner. The new Sea Dweller is not like the original Sea Dweller. So where do you draw the line? Yes, I see what you're saying. Uh, what about a gold Speedmaster? Why don't you get one of those? Because for the price of that, I can get a better watch in another make. They're quite. Cool. I won't lose any money. 
they're quite collectible. Yeah, but they don't make they, they don't hold their value like other models would. Tell me this. I uh, I think I'm disappointed that you didn't. I tell you what, I'm disappointed in your collection. Let me be completely brutal and honest with you. Yeah. I am disappointed that you. Um, I got to say, I don't think you have enough paddock there. I would have I'm, liked to have seen a um, five one seven zero. Get rid of some of these stupid fucking APs because AP is a bunch of fucking cunts. Okay, they're listen, not good people. Listen, they're not I'm, your friends, Rudy. Listen, 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 you, listen. I've got some AP. I've got APs on order, but they're just not come in. I've had them on for a long time. I've got the new the new perpetual calendar. I'm yeah. in next in the frame for that in the Nautilus. I've got the five seven two six on order. I'm waiting for that to come through. I've got several different Pateks on order, but they're just not, I have to wait until they come in, you know? So it's not that I, I don't have them. It's just, I, I don't know why. I don't know, I don't know why you don't get a five, one, seven, zero. I think that's the ultimate in class in Patek. Because the Patek I want, I want the Charlie Sheen watch. It's the one I want. The but, I mean, a five, one, seven, zero is everything. These APs could never be. But the thing is this, I don't need to get rid of it. I can have both if I want. Would you ever get it? You know, the 5170, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. They're a great thing to get. But what I've got the one that like Charlie Sheen's got, the 5970P. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, one. What about... The other thing I, I think you're missing from your collection there, I notice you have no minute repeaters. No, not at the moment. You've got, you got tourbillons. You've got tourbillons, but no. Well, 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 the next ones I want, actually, talking about world times as well, because I want to get a Lange world time. Okay. I've I seen one I like. Bacheron does a very nice world time. They do. They do an overseas world tongue, which is nice. Yeah. But they and also, also a normal I'm one, too. The FP Jean as well. Um, okay. How about the other thing? I think I, I wouldn't be buying many more APs. I don't, I wouldn't do that. Well, the, AP, the next AP I've got coming, well, not for a while, maybe next year. I don't know exactly when. Yeah. Because they're still in R and D. It's the new yeah. ultra thin perpetual <laughs> calendar. Okay. Okay. Uh, the other thing that disappoints me in the collection there, I um, I don't see a lot of yellow gold. Yellow gold doesn't suit me. Okay. It doesn't suit me. I prefer rose gold or white gold. See, I would. I'm not into yellow gold. It's not my thing. I, I would have liked to have seen you having a uh, solid gold sub, solid gold Pepsi GMT, and maybe a solid gold Daytona. Well, actually, the thing is, this, right? I th I would never buy new a solid gold Rolex. If you think about it, and I'm mm. talking English numbers, the solid gold Pepsi is twenty nine thousand, right? Yeah. Yeah. The stainless steel version is six thousand six hundred. Mm. Mm. So you're telling me there's 23 grams worth of gold in that Pepsi? Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. So for 29 grand, I could buy a Patek 5926. Now, which would you rather have? Or I you could buy an Aquino all I'm the kind, time. I'm kind of sad that you didn't have any Patek annual calendars or or perpetual calendars. Like well, a I told you I've got a perpetual calendar on order. I think 5396 is beautiful. Yeah, but I've got the fit, I've got the I've got the new Patek annual calendar, the perpetual calendar coming in the Nautilus. So that will that will cover my base. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I don't know why you went so far into APs. I don't think I don't think um I, I, I really don't I don't I don't think you need that many. I just I, I I I just buy what I like at the end of the day. I just buy what I like. Yeah. 
you know, it's like you, how, how many people do you know that are fans of your channel that have got dozens of Rolexes? Mm. Look how many Rolexes Clyde's got, and he's got two yeah. of the same watch. Yes. Yeah, I understand. Um, At least every one of my watches is different. They're not the same model. Yes. Yes. So you keep these in the bank safe? Of course. I would never keep them at home. You'd be nuts. No. How many <laughs> do you keep in a rotation? What, as in, you mean as in that like, I keep to, with me? Yeah. How many do you keep? Two. Maximum. What are you wearing at the moment? What do you have at the moment? I'm wearing my uh, offshore navy. Offshore navy and yes. the second one. The second one that I'm wearing is my Seiko Five. <laughs> <laughs> mm. do, you, do, you, do I don't know if you've seen, but um, there was a big article in the. Uh, UK newspaper of uh, theft in airports in going through security x-ray. Oh, what, what are they stealing? Them. Watches, rings, everything. Who's doing the thieving? The security staff and the people that are behind you. So you put it in the tray, and as it's going through, they take it out of the tray, the person behind you. Oh, see, I normally, I put it into my luggage so i i actually have a watch case i put the watch into the watch case and then i put it into my briefcase or my bag you know i don't believe like my the partner had a diamond ring stolen at dubai airport a few weeks ago and it was in the bottom of a bag with a rolex watch and the other ring how did they steal that i have no idea as soon as it went through the security when she went to put it out the bottom of a bag the ring went missing and what did she say we went to the uh, airport police. They then put us to the lost and found. Basically, as a foreigner, they don't want to know. But did they have camera footage of it? I don't have no idea. When I actually spoke to the police about it, they didn't want to know. They pushed us to uh, lost property, and they said we had to write to this address. And then yeah. when I actually complained to Emirates Airlines, mm -hmm. they said I have to apply to the police for the CCTV footage, but I've actually got to be there. Well, how can that help me if you're catching a fly? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's getting really rife in airport security now. It's getting really huge. What size so ring was it? through the beepers with it all on. What size diamond? I have no idea, to be honest. Did you I buy it? it? But it wasn't nothing special. It wasn't nothing did special, but it's not the point, is it? Did, did the point you buy is, it? some little so-and-so... Took that what? Took that ring. Mm. Through security. So can you imagine if 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 you have valuables that are stolen while it's going through the x-ray machine, then nothing is safe anywhere. Mm. The only way you can keep me secure is to have it on your wrist or on your finger. I'm eating some IKEA chocolate. Oh, do you know what my favourite is? You can't get it in England, but I had it in Dubai. It's Australian. What's Tim that? Tams. Tim Tams. Oh, they're not that great. I like them. I like them. I like them. Mm. Ikea do some really, really cool biscuits as well, actually. Mm. I don't like their furniture. Well, it's, um, it's just slapped together, isn't it? You know. It's on a budget. It's budget furniture. So you can buy watches then? Say again, sorry? You can save your money to buy watches. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, investing in watches, on certain watches, is better than having your money in the bank. You get a better return at the moment in this current climate. You're a very cultured guy, right? What do you think of steak tartare? It's disgusting. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have it. But do you know, a friend, someone I know who's Lebanese, lived in France. Mm -hmm. He saw these two Americans that um, sat next to him, and he ordered steak tartare, and they thought, "Oh, we'll have some of that," expecting a a big steak mm -hmm. with all the trimmings and everything else. 
and they came out and they were horrified. <laughs> this meant to me, you know. <laughs> With an egg on the top. What the fuck is that? How the hell do the French do that sort of shit? Well, I suppose it's all the, the herbs and the stuff they put in it. How well, they, they do it, I suppose. It's not for me. Mm. You know, I mean, think about it. In China, they have crickets on a stick, and they love it. <sighs> mm. I know what you're saying there, Rudy. <laughs> You know, you go to China and you can have um, a poodle kebab or an Alsatian curry, you know. <laughs> Anything with legs, they eat. <coughs> now, tell me this. Has Clive got mental problems himself? Uh, you'd have to ask him. I wouldn't know. I think everybody has got mental problems in some way or another. <laughs> I mean, do you honestly believe he sold his... Yacht master to buy a fucking Zenith? How fucking nuts is that? Which Zenith did he buy? Some ugly fucking Zenith. But I love Zenith watches. I think they're incredible watches. Yeah, but you have none. You love them, but you have none. I do. I have a ham wound, elite ham wound in, in rose gold, <coughs> 18 carat. That wasn't in the collection photos. No, because I never take it out. I've, I've not taken it out for over 10 years. I bought that watch in 2001. I see. It's got a brown crocodile strap. It comes with the, the full box with a chronometer certificate. It's got everything. Complete. Mm. Mm. So <clears throat> tell me this. As far as uh, your collection goes, I think you should stop buying APs. I, I reckon you get a 5396. I reckon get a 5170. But the thing is this, right? I'm going to stop buying Patek after this perpetual calendar because I think pa uh, Patek Philippe are not going in the way I, I like them, the, the way they're going. <coughs> they're coming too commercialised and too mainstream now for me. Well, you know, you know, no interesting statistic about Patek? Which is? They're churning out 40,000 a year, okay? No, it's not. It's 58,000. Okay. They service fifty to 60000 a year. Did you know that? Yeah, because servicing is where the money is. <laughs> yeah. When you buy a car, the garage doesn't make the money on the car. He makes it on the servicing. Mm. I sent my world time in. You noticed that? And um, I thought the service was quite reasonable. Yeah, but that's an estimate. It's like when you send your uh, Rolex in. They quote yeah. you 500 quid, and then they phone you up and say, well, by the way, you need to change this. You need to change that. <coughs> well, they, they looked at it. The watchmaker looked at it. He, 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 I mean, he, he didn't see. I mean, the watch is working. It doesn't have a problem as such. But yeah, uh, you I, I thought it was... not to get it polished, because Patek will only polish their watches four times in its lifetime. And then what happens then? They won't polish it. How do they know it's been, how many times it's been polished? Because if you've because if you've sent it to them for a service and you've requested a polish, then they know everything about that watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me this: um, how, how do you service all your watches? Do you send them off every couple of years, or what do you do? Or you don't bother? Well, of course you. Oh, of course I service them because if you don't service them, then you a you'll devalue in the watch, and b you could cause more problems. In the long run, you know, it's like it's like saying, you know, you never service a car until it goes wrong. But tell me this, you know, you've got your paddock world time there. And um, that's the um, amazing, the amazing dial one. You're going to leave it in the sleeve and then you're not even going to open it. You're going to send it back to them for servicing still in the sleeve. No, I won't, no, because it's sealed, because mm -hmm. it's sealed right there's no moisture or anything getting into that watch so sure. we'll need to get service there's n there's n the, the oils are not going to dry out because there's no air in the watch it still needs service in 10 years time won't it but if it needs servicing in 10 years time then i'll leave that to the other person but i won't get that watch taken out of that because the moment i send that watch for a service they will take it out the plastic packaging the sealed packaging yeah. Unless they reseal it again, of course. But then again, 
that will still devalue it because how does the person know that it's not been born? So your watch has never been touched by you? No, only in the packaging. Isn't that like having sex with a condom on? <laughs> no, because I didn't buy the watch because I like it. I bought it for an investment. Mm. It's like a guy who runs a massage parlor. He doesn't yeah. necessarily screw the woman. He's, he's employing. No. <laughs> no, I see what you're saying there. Um, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, I've. Uh, I mean, Lange is interesting. Little... That you want a Lange one. I do like Lange. You see, I would rather now have a Lange than a Patek. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Because they make less. I mean, you think about it. in England, oh, right, in England now, there is 43 Patek authorised dealers. And they're yes. making 58,000 watches a year. They said, yeah. we will never go on Instagram, Terry Stern said. We will never go on Facebook. We will never go on any social media. Now they're everywhere. Sure, they realised. Look. Really they're either doing that or they're building up their stocks to sell the company for, for, for a, a larger amount of money. Rudy, Rudy, I'd like to have you back on again. I've got to shoot off soon. It's been great discussing your collection. I think it's an amazing collection. I just think you should stop buying more APs. But it's not going to stop me buying other watches, so it makes no difference, does it? Mm. And uh, I want to discuss Rolex with you next time. What are you doing tomorrow night? So tomorrow, this time tomorrow. Tomorrow's fine. Let's do it tomorrow then, okay? Mm. Tomorrow is fine, no problem. We can do it the same time. <coughs> I want to discuss Rolex with you. I know that's a brand you hate. I don't, I, I don't, actually, that's not true. I don't hate it. How can I hate a brand that makes me money? You can't hate something that makes you money. <laughs> if someone gave you a thousand dollars you wouldn't hate him would you no i see what you're saying <laughs> yeah, well, you would he'd be your best friend for a while okay oh, i'm not let's... saying there's anything wrong with rolex i'm just saying they're not for me no no i understand let's do a show tomorrow rudy let's do it and uh we'll discuss it further thank you so much for coming on it's all right no worries and uh is there any criticisms you wanted to address about your collection? Only to some of the comments, really. That what did like you want to say? say? What did you well, want to say? To say I've already addressed two of them with this. Uh, yeah. Greg Mack. There's another guy that called Roger yeah. Chavez, and yeah. you know, again, you know, his comment doesn't make sense because. Yeah. He says, he says, you know, that it's an expensive collection. He says, but from a, a watch enthusiast viewpoint, the owner of the collection knows the, the price of everything, but the value of nothing. Well, sure. Of course I know the value of it. You know, and it, it's, it's just talking rubbish. I must say, this one on the screen now, what the fuck is that? I think that's one of the ugliest APs I've seen. Actually, do you know that's a GMT? Did you know that? No. no yeah, I it's didn't. a GMT. GMT. It's a GMT and it's got a flying tourbillon. Oh, wow. Right? And they only made 100 pieces. Amazing. See, everything has a reason, Paul. It's not buying it for the sake of it. Everything has a reason. That's a nice shot there. And uh, this... this uh, That's a 39mm skeleton. <clears throat> That's beautiful, that. That's quite nice. That's very nice. You know, uh, tell me this: watches make you happy? The thing is, it's like I, I've said it time and time again on, on your um, previous videos. If I if I lost every one of them tomorrow, I'm not bothered. As long as I've got a roof over my head and food on the table, yes, I'm happy. You know, the thing is, is to live in the moment. You know, yes, there was a. Just before you go, because I know you've got to go, but there was a, yes. a, a movie with Audrey Hepburn yes. called Charade. Yes. With Walter Matthau and Cary Grant. Sure, sure. And it was about, they had to find this this million dollars or something like that. And yes. it turned out that it was putting a stamp on an envelope. And this kid 
didn't know what it was and he traded it for some other rubbish stamps but the the dealer knew what exactly what the stamp was sure so he goes back to the dealer yes and they explain the situation and the dealer gave them back the uh stamp but yes. what the dealer said is the same with watches he said it's enough for me that i owned the what i owned the stamp for a short time but he owned it if that makes sense i see so if i if, if every watch had to go tomorrow yes it makes no difference the fact is i've got the memory that i actually owned the watch it's a very philosophical thing, Rudy. Well, it's uh, true because the thing is, Paul, doesn't matter what... It's like, you know, yourself, right? The amount of watches you've had pass through your hands <laughs> that you've enjoyed and you've owned. It's like photographs, it's memories. Every watch has a memory or has a story to it, you know? Yes. And that's where it comes into because it's not necessarily whether you like the watch or you don't like the watch. That watch has a story to tell, which is a memory to you personally, if that makes sense. Yes. yes. Like I, I, I sourced a, uh, a deep sea Karen for a friend of mine who was the CEO of Audemars Piguet, right? Sure. And they brought out the new version now, and he could sell the old version. He said, no, I won't sell the old version to get the new version. He says, because it has a memory. He says, because you spent the time finding the watch for me, and you got it for me. And he said, that's a, that's a memory for me. It's the same thing. Do you see what sure. I mean? Sure, 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 so, it's, sure. so it's not about that. It's not necessarily about the value of the watch or what the watch is. It's a memory. Like, uh, I'm sure that that certain watches that you've had in your time, that you've sold, mm. you've worn that watch to certain events or certain places you've been, and you know, <laughs> always that watch will always have a story to tell about that. I understand. That's a great way to great leave way it. To We're going to cut this off cut now, this Rudy. Off now, Thank you for your, your time. And no uh, worries. We'll see you again tomorrow. Be good. See you later.